Welcome to yet another Sunday Night News and Nonsense. And Total OS today and I have all kinds of really cool little articles. Well, maybe just a few here. Uh, that's important to you in your Linux world. Hi, Total OS today. How are you today? Uh, hang on. I got to take these ice cubes out of my pants. It's been so, ah, oh, so much better. Yeah, we're having a heat wave here, folks, if you live here in the States. But I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I have AC. I just got my uh, cold ice cream. I just scarfed it down. So I'm ready to go. Oh, yeah. And you're also approaching 400 episodes. And, folks, we're going to have a wonderful toast roast on Monday night. And so I guess by Tuesday you'll get to hear all about it and uh, that sort of thing. So Yes, we'll be uh, recording on Monday night. I have my earplugs <laughs> ready. So my earplugs and my sound cancellation headphones, I won't feel a thing. Thank you very much. <laughs> well, I don't know. I don't know. I think I think you're going to, you know, they say let he who is without sin cast the first stone. And I think everybody's going to be hurling them. Oh, you. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, uh, who's of- the show off now? <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, she's. Hey, did you hear that Amazon is working on its own phone? According to reports, Amazon is working on its own smartphone, running a forked version of Android. Amazon <laughs> already has its own Kindle Fire tablet, which runs on Android. However. Amazon has cut Google out of its platform as users can't buy content or apps from Google Play Store. On the contrary, Google allows Amazon to sell their content on Android devices. So, an Android-powered Amazon phone can be a lucrative market for Amazon as it has the entire ecosystem in place. Now, the Amazon phone, does it have a shortcut speed dial to the Amazon jungle? I wonder. Yeah, I mean, why not? It's Amazon. They can sell everything. Why not that? I mean, what's next? Use body parts? Come on. But uh, uh, yeah, well, uh, obviously yeah. they're going to be pushing everybody to get their eBooks and everything, and uh, all the. It's other- a marketing ploy. I guess. I guess it's a smart gamble. You know, sure. I, yeah. I bought. I bought a bunch of decent things from Amazon. You know, um, if you know, if yeah. I'm looking to buy different things, you know, and I don't want to buy it on uh, on uh, eBay, yeah. Amazon's got all kinds of wonderful deals. So yeah, way to go if they can make it work. Why you not? Know, yeah. Yeah. I've ordered stuff, stuff off Amazon. I've had good luck ordering stuff. They seem to ship rather promptly. Yeah. I look. It's why not? It's more choices. You know, for the consumer. So. Why not? Well, speaking of choices, yeah, the new Google tablet should be released here in about a week or so. Yes. Uh, yeah, from what I've been reading, it's going to be the, this might be the product of the year for, for what it's selling, $199.99, uh, quad-core. Uh, the latest really? Google quad-core. I mean, four engines. I mean, this thing is going to be like a Ferrari, you know? Oh, but yeah. uh, it's got the latest uh, Android, was a 4.0? One uh, uh, jelly bean or something. I forget what it's called. Something like yeah, that. Yeah, I think it's yeah. going to be jelly bean. Yes, okay. yes. So really, for the money and for what it does, you really can't go wrong. I think Google, if this thing is stable, I think they have a winner. Yeah, I'd say so, yeah. Right. Uh, and, let's, and not only yeah, that, but yeah. I think Chromebooks are already on sale at Best Buy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. I haven't had a chance to look around. I think they start around 300 350 Yeah. I did see that article, yes. Way to go. We got Linux on store shelves here. All right. Finally. Finally. Yes. So this is uh, so it is my belief that we're finally seeing the year of the Linux desktop and I hope this con- trend continues to grow. I know I read an article uh, that um, that uh, Commodore USA is going to be releasing their spin on Mint, and uh, uh, I actually went on their website, and they're uh, actually selling computers. They, some of the models they have look like the old 1980s computers <laughs> that you hooked up to the TV, but they're fully loaded. I mean, they'll run they'll run Linux and that sort of thing. And hey, more power to them if they can yeah. if they can get right. it to sell. You know, and right. you don't have to have their operating system on it. You can put any Linux distribution on it if you want to. And uh, so, hey, more power to them. The, the, the more we see right. Linux uh, right. out there, yeah, I think it's a great idea. Well, like I said, it's more choices for for consumers. I think it's fantastic. Exactly. And now, yeah. 
Now, uh, interestingly enough, and speaking of choices and that sort of thing, a number of people still are worried about the secure. Blah, 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 blah. I can't even get this out today. Oh, the, the old goofy. Boot. Goofy. Yes, goofy. Yeah. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. The EFI, UEFI, and that sort of thing. Yes. Well, it turns out that the Free Software Foundation published a white paper on secure boot. Now, um, the Free Software Foundation have recently published a white paper containing guidelines for free software operating systems regarding the Secure Boot. The guidelines explains what Secure Boot means in detail and covers the approaches taken by Ubuntu and Fedora to overcome it. And uh, there, are, um, uh, I'll give you a link to where they can view those recommendations uh, yeah. if you want to. Uh, secure boot has always been a concern of Linux distributions, and it means people will not be able to run and install GNU Linux operating systems on their computers, those who have secure boot enabled. To overcome the issue, Fedora has decided to purchase keys signed by VeriSign that will make the computer recognizable to its operating system and will enable users to run it. And all Fedora releases will come with this key, and henceforth, there will not be a problem in installing Fedora on secure boot enabled machines. And of course, Ubuntu also has its solution as well. However, you know, this is still going to push away people that like to compile and build their own kernels. And so the Free Software Foundation has come up with their guidelines that they feel mm -hmm. should be enabled for people to make their own keys and that sort of thing. So I'll, I'll send you a link, TotalOS, today so okay. you can post that in the show notes in case people might be okay. interested in doing that. So this this thing with the Yuffie, it's it's. I mean, the bottom line is it's not user friendly, and it seems to me it's almost totally unnecessary, right? I would imagine. Yeah. Um, I mean, really, well, right? Well, I, yeah. Well, th there is, you know, there they they have a petition on the site, right? Um, where they're uh, looking to um, tell these OEMs, hey, you know, there's a campaign, and actually, I'm going to put up a video uh, myself to uh, help promote this okay. in that. People should be aware of what they are purchasing. Do not go out and purchase hardware right. that has this feature right. uh, enabled on it and doesn't give you the opportunity to disable it. It takes away your I, freedom, right? Yes. Exactly. It takes away your freedom because pretty much what they're trying to do is lock you into, okay, yeah, you can run Linux, but you can only run a certain kind of Linux. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and uh, I wonder if Microsoft is going to be pocketing some money out of this. You know, mm, I mean, yeah, and, that, that report, and and basically what the white paper is basically saying it is forcing you to place your trust in Microsoft and that sort of thing. And in the white paper, they went on to say that they that the Free Software Foundation considers Microsoft products to be malware. Mm, that's a rather broad um, statement. Yeah, yeah, right. But but yeah. I mean. You know, I, I understand, I'm, but th that's I'm, rather, I'm, yeah. You know, they that's what they consider, you yes. know, and I'm not saying that they're 100% right in that area, you know, but um, the thing is, you know, at the end of the day, it should be about choice. People yes. should be able to put what they want on the hardware they buy. And so I will be launching a video uh, on that warning people. Please make sure that you double check. Uh, the hardware that you're purchasing, if if it does not have the ability to and you know to shut off the secure boot, yes. and I will also have a link to the petition so that you can sign it as well. So that right. will be that will be coming up on uh, the Cup of Linux show, okay. and I highly recommend that anybody that is listening to this um, definitely check out the article. Right. And sign the petition and uh, put that link to the petition on your blogs, on your home pages, on your Facebook, Twitter pages, uh, that sort of thing. So we can get this word out and let these OEMs know we want our freedom when we yes. buy your hardware. I would have to agree there 100%. I mean, look, I'm not going to go as far as to say Windows itself is the malware. I mean, yes, there's malware in, but the, I mean, that's a bit much. Look, at, look, at, I can understand yeah. some, some people are really miffed, but let's be somewhat diplomatic about this. I'm not ready to go that far. I don't like the Eufy. I mean, I can understand it, but at least give me the option to shut it off. Mm -hmm. If it's if it's going to be there, fine. You know, And I understand why, because they really don't want you messing with the computer. If you don't know what you're doing, then you mess it up and you say it's broken. When you broke it, and, and 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 then it's not Microsoft's fault. So I completely understand, but give us the option, right? Yeah. Right. All right, fine. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. All right. Go well, ahead. no. 
because mine's mine's uh, mine's going to be a little bit expanded. But go ahead, go. Okay. Well, happy Fourth of July, everybody. For those of you who had a nice uh, uh, Independence Day, uh, yeah. that sort of thing, something really cool happened, and in the uh, European U Union. Ooh. Now you all remember SOPA. Don't you? And yeah, that's what big... I used to sour in the morning. Oh, oh, wait a minute. That's soap. Sorry. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> okay. Well, happy Independence Day, the day when Europeans stood up for their own freedom from the U.S. corporate interests. Ooh. The day when ACTA, the Anti-Counterfeiting Trade Agreement proposed by U.S. corporations, was defeated on European soil. Wow. The SOPA Piper's cousin, ACTA has been rejected by the European Parliament in almost an unanimous margin of 478 votes against to 39 in favor. Mm -hmm. Way to go. Let so the fireworks blow. Wee! There we go. Exactly. So, I mean, that is another victory. That is another victory yeah. for your freedom and my yeah. freedom. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah, so, and I realize, yeah, piracy is wrong. Don't get, you know, but the thing is, you know, they're just going about all of this the wrong way by trying to censor the internet and that sort of thing and turning off avenues. You know, you know, if they could have it their way, they'd probably make every kind of uh, BitTorrent yeah. client illegal. Well. And I'll tell you what, I use BitTorrent all the time to download my Linux distributions for doing yeah, reviews on yeah, my shows. Yeah. I mean, it's so much faster to download. Uh, to it download works. It's that simple. Exactly. Right. It's right. faster than to download right. it from a regular server. Right. So right. having these file sharing uh, options are a wonderful thing. Right. And they could have their way. They'd have all that stuff shut off on us. So it, this is a wonderful victory. I, yeah. Wonderful. It, it's good news. I, I would have to say that. Um, oh, yes. All right. Yes. All right. Well, speaking, speaking of piracy, when I think of piracy, I think of the high seas. And this is, I guess, kind of a good segue. Back in January. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I, yes, I, Captain. Uh, not making light of a disaster, but back in January in, the, in, in Italy, northern Italy, on one of the beautiful coasts, one of the largest cruise ships, one of the most technologically advanced cruise ships in the world, ran aground. I guess the captain, Captain, you know, you know, Captain Meatballs, I guess, made a little boo-boo. <laughs> and, and and ran aground this multi like ninety million dollar technological marvel called the Costa Concordia. Now some people got her passed away. I'm not making light of that none whatsoever. But uh, the 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 organization that's in charge of passenger safety, they have new uh, safety drill rules called musters. M U S T R. Now I read this Muster, last yes. night. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. I read this last night. And going through through the technology news, and this really blew my mind. But you tell me why they didn't have this before. This is a new muster policy, a twelve the twelve specific emergency instructions. Ready? Okay, here we go, Spat. And, and you tell you're more. Yeah. I mean, you are more a fisherman than me. But here we go. No, number one, the the new rule. Okay, when and how to don a life jacket. You mean they didn't have this before? Personally, I prefer a parachute to jump <laughs> off the damn ship, okay? Number two, <laughs> right? Okay. Number two, I know, I know. Number two, description of emergency signals and appropriate responses in the event of emergency. How about yelling help? <laughs> Number three, the location of the life jackets. Walmart. I mean... <laughs> they didn't have this before. <laughs> Are you kidding me? The uh, whatever we're gonna okay. Num num number four. Where to muster when the emergency signal is sounded? How <laughs> about the bar? Uh -huh. Get plastered. I be. I don't know. Number five. The method of accounting for passenger attendance at musters, both for training and in the event of an actual emergency. Number six. How information will be provided in emergency? What to expect if the master orders an evacuation of the ship? Evidently, panic. Yeah, I know you're falling asleep, but this just blows you know, my mind. They I, didn't was, I, yeah. I was in the Navy, and we had muster every morning. Okay. We had muster every morning, and basically they would, you know, basically uh, they would take attendance, everybody that was there. You yeah. had to be ready for okay. morning inspection, you know. Um, you know, and basically they read the plan of the day, all the instructions passed down from the captain down the chain of the command and that sort of thing. We knew where our life jackets were. We knew what we had to do. And, okay. of course, we we ran regular drills 
uh, at least twice a month that I can remember now. This was many years ago. So, so this is standard Mind stuff. Okay. Yes, this was standard stuff, and these uh, guys aren't doing this? Oh, my God, I think the captain's been uh, drinking too much uh, rum, rum, rum. Too much of that <laughs> Italian homemade wine or something, yeah. But, exactly, uh, yeah. I, yeah, I just found this. Look, on. I hope this makes passenger safe, well, a lot, you know, cruise ships yeah. a lot safer. But this is sad. I didn't have this before. But yeah. anyway, I, I just thought I would mention it. I mean, I've never been on a cruise ship. It looks like fun, but... Uh, Wow, I hope this makes uh, cruising, shall we say, a lot more safer. And please don't use a parachute. I was only kidding. Use a life jacket, okay? Anyway, uh, maybe that's... They're, maybe yeah. they were trying to reenact the uh, Titanic seeking or something. Or okay. maybe there's nope. some more on really, sh you know, fishing <laughs> a hole in the hull or something, you know? But uh, anyway. Oh, no. goodness. Where do you find these articles? I just went, well, I, I, I remember the story because it was all over CNN. And, I mean, this ship, if you do go, this this thing is huge. And, and like, it's on its side. You know what I mean? Like, on the yeah. shore. It's really, I guess it's become a tourist attraction. I, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> and I guess they're going to, I mean, look, the, the ship is $90 million, And I guess they're going to spend more than that to raise it up somehow and tow it. And I'm like, just oh. leave it there. Oh, gosh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. It was a disaster. It's very sad. I'm, I am not making fun of that in any way, but uh, yeah. I don't know. Common sense usually prevails, but they should have had these rules, these muster policy, yeah. and you know, way before for all ships, not just the Costa Concordia. Yeah. All right, I'll just leave it at that, uh, Spatry. I think we are done for this center report. Uh, yeah. As Fun, you know, this is fun as always. Thanks to all of you who watch and take the time to listen. Yeah. Uh, happy sailing. I guess I'll, I will end it on that note. To those of you who celebrate the 4th of July here, happy 4th, even though today is the, what, 6th? But I'm hearing fireworks outside. And it's time for another plug on July 15th, right? Yes. The, uh, I've been July 15th, the July. Linux Distro community is hosting Total OS today, and he's got his own Sunday night show. What time is that going to start? Do you know? Uh, the official recording starts at 9 p.m. Of course, we'll be in pre-chat before that. I've been invited to. Oh, right. And it'll be Sunday nights, uh, weekly. I hope I hope weekly. Uh, we will. The first show will be the Newbies podcast. You were. Oh, I I did post a video up, a short video with the link to get you guys. If you don't know about how to get started, you can go to LinuxDistroCommunity.com with instructions. You will yes, need Bumble. Yeah, um, I've been on the Zoo Crew many times before. It's a lot of fun. Uh, who knows? You may be invited to be a guest on the show if, if you are not because of you know time constraints or many guests we have. You always welcome to listen in the uh, what's it called the listening room. Right, Spatry. Exactly, yeah. and then and then for those who are just in the listening room, you can connect on IRC, and you can send out your comments to us as the show is being uh, recorded live. And uh, either Total OS today or myself, we will see your comments, and yep. we will uh, add your comments uh, to the discussion as appropriate. That is correct. So that is that will be July fifteenth. A weekly show. Uh, I'm not changing my other stuff. I do the toss cast and this stuff because two of two of our favorite show hosts, IG and Twill, are, are not available Sunday nights. But we will still be continuing to do those type of uh, toss casts, like the last hilarious yeah. one we did. Uh, I tell you, IG is <laughs> real. IG is a natural born Australian comic, in my opinion. I think he doesn't <laughs> want to admit it. But uh, anyway, check yeah. it out, and uh, I hope. You guys enjoy listening to it about as, as much fun as we enjoy doing it. So, yes. All right. Thank you, one and all. Good night. Ciao.